Anything other than that, I don't know about it. I ain't even tripping about. What's this relationship with you and Drake? Drake, let me let me let me finish. Drake is possibly the hardest person to get in touch with. And let's be clear, every song he does goes number one. And he's just like the Michael Jackson of this time. And I've watched him say, yo, I had to call up Ross because I ain't hear no Ross music. And I'm, I like to hear Ross music. <laughs> what kind of shit is this? I'm just asking you, yo, Rose, what is your true relationship with Drake? What is like, what is it that this man, he loves you, man? No, nah, the, the love is genuine. And it's been like that for shit close to a decade now since he came in the game. You know, I, that's one thing that I'm sure several people will let you know is even when um, I may have been the hottest at the time, I never loved homie none of the young niggas coming up. You know what I'm saying? When Drake was just getting on the team, being in Miami, needed a record, I, I moved for him the same way I moved for Weezy. I moved for a young nigga trapping in Liberty City for a verse. Sam Sneak just hit me. What's little homie name? Tapia. Tafia. Sam Sneak just hit me oh, that's my nights ago. Up with Tafia. Yeah. My brother. Yeah. Oh, no, beautiful guy. You know what I mean? Sam Tafia Sneak just hit me. Just hit good. me. Just hit me about homie wanting the record. And I knocked his shit out like, you know, like a big boy. And that's how I always no, did this. No, Tafia's a good dude. I was with him locked up. You know what I mean? Good dude. And so shit, it's like, it's been vice versa. Godson, when I called you to do the the song for him, you sent it right back the next day. Rest in peace, Fred the Godson. Fred Better the believe Bronx. it. Better believe it. Rest in peace that, to the homie. But that's how that's how a genuine nigga do it. Even when you're on top of the game, nigga, you got everything in the world you can motherfucking ask for. A little nigga hit you and you move for him like he was motherfucking home. That's how it and come back around. That's how it come back around. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's so how it Drake, was. He, when he, he, he was coming Drake. up, you embraced him with mad love, and he never forgot that. He never forgot that. You know, Drake done pulled up to the crib with Rolexes, brand new Rolexes for me, different gifts, different... So the love is genuine between us, you know what I'm saying? And shit, we just spoke a couple nights ago, so you know how we rocky. No, that is, that that that's the truth. Khaled is all in the comments. Last night, Khaled wanted to get beat up by somebody from the ATL. He was going so crazy. My daughter's his goddaughter. She was like, "Look, draw Papa going crazy on this shit." <laughs> hey, shout out to Khaled. Shout out to We the Best. You know, and, and, and that's what it is, man. It's just genuine, you know what I'm saying? And like I say, Joe, I watch you, you know, invest in niggas, cool and Drake, you know, um, of course, DJ Callen and a few others. So you always brought real business to the table. So I always honor that. Yeah, yo, let me tell you something. And I say it all the time, and it's true. I told Atlantic to sign Trick Daddy. I came down here for the Super Bowl, and the you know then when he had that joint first, Remember what what what's the what's the what's the uh swap meet? What's the shit in Miami? The flea market. The flea market. I went to the flea market and I got the, the, the he had the welfare shit. Yeah. And the food like, stamp. Yo, the food stamp. I was like, yo, I like this. I went to Craig Cowman in New York in Atlanta. I didn't even know Trick Daddy. And he and he was like, yo, Joe, who's hot out there? I said, yo, this guy's the hottest guy out there. Two days later, he called me with no business. He was like, hey, Joe, guess who I just signed? Your guy you told me about, Trick Daddy. Now with Pitbull. Shout out to Robbie Fernandez. Robbie Fernandez, my man, for a million years, Robbie Rob. Robbie Rob gave me Pitbull's demo and told me, yo, this is my artist. Now, Robbie helped me when I ain't have shit. You understand? I said, yo, Robbie, not a problem. I went to TBT. I gave him the demo. They was like, yo, you know any Spanish guys that rap? I said, he's the guy. Pitbull got signed. I'm not lying. I'm talking about shit that anybody who's alive could come and say, Joe, you're lying. I'm not lying. But, you know, that goes to show the love I appreciate and I love in Miami and I live there. People just embrace me and show me nothing but love, man. What's next for you, Ross? What's going on? We got new music coming. And, and, 
of course, you know I got new music coming, but not right before we finish up on the last thing. I wanted to make this clear, but also your greatest contribution to the game, besides of besides your hustle, you know, and what the TS represented. You know, that that's something that a real nigga that anyone anybody wanted to be a CEO could always honor and respect. But the shit I gotta say I love you most for, brother, is bringing the legend big pun of light. You know what I'm saying? Those John Blaze records. You know that boy pun. I'm gonna be honest. Niggas don't really throw that name around, brother. Because it was special. That wordplay nigga was special. Any record on that album right now, I could smoke one, two, and go. But Yo, Ross, let me play. tell you something. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something, Ross. You, come play you with hit it on the net. You said because it was special. And that's the truth. He too special, so everybody don't really want to elaborate because they like, when you really elaborate, you like, yo, this guy was like the best. It'll make you wonder, like, why ain't nobody line that shit up and say, let's see who really the nicest? It'll make you question. It'll make you question. Because that wordplay was, his confidence was just, niggas know what time it was, man. And you know we the big boys, Ross. Of course. You know we the big boys. <laughs> we the bad body ballers, baby. Yo, yo. We the biggest in the game. Yo, yo, Ross, let me tell you something. I've been killing these dudes. So in Corona, I started this Fat Joe show. And now when I think about the competition, I'm destroying these guys. This competition. Whoever thinks they competition, I am destroying these guys in the in the worst way. These guys are dizzy. They throwing up. Now, for one, you too well connected, brother. You call niggas last minute and get them on the show. Man, I got a women empowerment next week, Ross. Give me some names of some women that you would like to see up on the show next week. That'd be like Michelle Obama. I'm trying. They some shit came out today. She's not feeling well, but I'm on it. Okay, you on it? You on it? Um, let's get one of the late. Let's get one of the young ladies that's that's talking that shit for the movement. I got one, Tamika Mallory. She's on Tuesday. Exactly. She's a. She's you know, a, talk, you know I just got that? up. I just got up on Shorty recently. She's a. She's a powerful mind, a beautiful soul. I. I got a lot of respect for her. I just. She's you know. A real deal. Yeah. We got that. We yeah. got that though. Yeah. Uh, Rose, before I let you go, give me your top five dead or alive. I'm gonna say Big. I'm going to say Tupac, that Machiavelli project touched me different. All Eyes on Me, that, um, you know, I've always been one of them people that believe anybody can make one dope-ass album. But you ain't going to roll the dice and make two dope albums if you wasn't a dope motherfucker. It ain't no way around it. Yeah. It's hard enough making it one dope record, but to make two dope albums, you know, so Tupac was always one of the most powerful, influential niggas, but that Machiavelli album, it, it, it put it over the top. You know, that's when niggas went, went to saying he was in Jamaica. That's some shit, nigga. When you dead and they say, nah, he ain't dead. Dog in Mississippi. He in Cuba. Nigga in Cuba. Nigga in Colombia. Joe, nigga still. So we, but, got, we, got, we got Biggie, we got Pop. Who up? We got Biggie, we got Pac, because he was a, a dear friend of mine, Nipsey Hussle. Mm. And you got to understand the way when I put my list together, I always, I understand when brothers wasn't here, you know, we didn't get to see them live it to their full potential. That's but right. just based on the, the way Nipsey moved from when I met him five years later, that, that pen had done, went to a whole nother level. So I know if Nipsey was still here, Nipsey would have been on top of the West Coast right now without a problem. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Big, I'm gonna say Pac, I'm gonna say Nipsey Hustle. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I could easily throw big pun in there. 